happy Monday! It is Monday right now. In fact, this is supposed to go up in an hour and a half, and I have very, very low hopes that that's going to happen. So let's lower our expectations and just hope that it gets up on a Monday at all in any time zone. Okay. Remember a few months back when I told you how I was going to view my channel every Monday and that I would be here, rain or shine, and sometimes it would just be me unprepared talking at the camera? Hello. We've reached that point. But I do have a really, really good story for you, and I'm just going to let it ramble fall out of my brain, tumbling hither and yon. It might not make all the way sense until I get to the end, just like that sentence didn't, still doesn't. But that's okay, we're just gonna keep plucking along. This is gonna be a lightly edited story time video, and the thing that's funny about this story is, I am revealing something that happened when I was vlogging, but chose not to vlog this. Because I wasn't comfortable enough with myself as a mom yet to share this part of me. But three kids in, I am now. I figured this would be a good story time because it's a festive one. Happy Holidays! This is a Bits and Clips backstory doozy. If you're new to my channel, you may not know that I spent the majority of my life caring for my mom. She uh, lived at the near end of life for over 10 years and I was her 100% caretaker in a lot of desperate and dire situations where every moment could have been her last. It was a very tumultuous past decade. She passed away a couple of years ago, but I was vlogging as part of my time of being her life support, as she called me sometimes. A big part of my life was trying to figure out how to help her enjoy her days because she was always in so much constant pain and had very low quality of life that it really was a big burden on my heart to try and help her find little bits to grab joy from, little bits to laugh and smile about. I was really invested in her bright spots of the day. So that's groundwork laid for any of you newbies. Okay, setting the scene. It is Scarlett's first Christmas. Ryan is working a lot during the holiday season. He's coaching as well. So I am going to go get pictures taken with Santa. I have a very specific Santa that I had wanted to get my kids pictures taken with since I was in high school. My someday children were going to get their pictures taken with this Santa if he was still around and kicking by the time that I had kids. And he was, so I was thrilled. It meant about a 45 minute drive out of my area to a mall and waiting in long lines with a little girl. Scarlett was what, eight months at the time? of her first Christmas and I was gonna be tackling it by myself because Ryan was working. This is one of those moments that I thought I don't want my mom to miss out on this. Her first granddaughter, first Christmas pictures, heading out into the city all dressed in its Christmas best. I knew it was gonna be a big job but I decided that I was going to take both of them to go get Scarlet Santa pictures taken. The year Scarlet was born, my mom had really strong good days and really strong bad days, and I was hoping that this day we were gonna do the pictures would be a really strong good day, and it seemed like it was. Once again, for the new kids, my mom could only walk short distances, her legs were in really bad shape, and there were certain times throughout the last couple of years where she was on an amputation watch and she was completely in a wheelchair, where other times where she was walking. So. On this day, she had been walking pretty well. We planned to just go get our Santa pictures taken. I thought surely there would be a bench nearby she could sit on while we were waiting in the line, and then we would stroll our way out if she wanted to stop into a store, great, and besides that, it was just the car ride home. I prepared as much as I could, mostly mentally, and we headed out on our adventure. So we all bundled into the car and we headed over to this mall. It's one where you have to take like a toll bridge and a couple of different freeways to get there. We were invested in finding this Santa. The ride was fun. We did what we do. Me and my mom sang a bunch of silly songs. We put on Christmas carols. We sang loudly. We tried to sing over the baby crying in the back because Scarlett wasn't that fond of car rides. It went well. We got to the mall. We took our time getting in. We had the one destination point. So I held my mom's arm. I put Scarlett in her stroller important note for the story. This was my first time using Scarlett's big girl stroller, not with the car seat clipped in, but forward facing, just buckle her in stroller. It had been gifted to us, passed down from another mom who didn't need it anymore, seemed simple enough, opened right up, put her in it. I realized that it's got a bit of a wobbly wheel. That's okay, one wobbly wheel isn't gonna set me off for my day. But I didn't realize that the wobbly wheel was foreshadowing. I gave my mom my arm and we very slowly, but with her walking and feeling good, made our way into the mall, going from point A to the car to point B, Santa Claus. We window shopped along the way. I pushed the baby, she was fine. I held my mom up, supporting her with my arms. She was fine. She liked looking at all the storefronts. We were having our little bits of joy in the holiday season. We got to the Santa line and it was long, but that's okay, that's what I expected. Set my mom off to the side on a bench, got her set up. I had my hefty diaper bag over my shoulder and my stroller. I was all set up for whatever I was going to need while we were waiting in line. And I felt like leg one of the journey was complete. It did get a little hairy from there. The other 
other holiday patrons around me were not feeling their bits of Christmas joy. Nobody would let me out of the line to help my mom use the restroom or to let me change my baby's diaper. We worked it all out, but I was a very nervous new mom who was doing a lot of standing nursing and changing her diaper in the stroller, like leaned back and trying to just fuss with everything. So by the time we finally made it up to Santa, we were a little worse for her wear, but mostly me. She was still cute. So I plopped her in his lap. My mom weeble wobbled her way out of the bench and over to go stand and see the picture taken. We both smiled at her. Scarlet screamed her head off. That's okay, it's memories. That was a solid four hour experience, but we had made it and survived. Now we just needed to leave the mall. And here's where the story really starts. So I now have a sobbing little bundle of wonder wearing her Christmas best, and I have a mom who has been seated in a bench for four hours and can no longer walk herself back out from where we are to the car. That's okay, I know that the info desk has wheelchairs that we can borrow, so I request to get one for my mom so that I can get her out to the car and then I'm just gonna bring it back in while she sits with the baby in the car. That's the plan, we can do it. I can push a stroller full of crying Christmas baby and carry my overpacked diaper bag while pushing a wheelchair out to my car. I mean, it's fine, it'll be fine, it's fine, it's gonna be fine. I think I probably vlogged this day. It was her first Christmas pictures and I was trying to capture all the memories all the time. So there's probably a vlog out there, minus this part, somewhere among the bits and clips archives. So here's me still trying to maintain the Christmas joy, singing Christmas carols over the baby sobs, hoping that it will distract her and make her sing along. My mom, who's obviously struggling, but is trying to keep a happy face for me because she knows I'm trying to salvage all the Christmas joy for all the people and pushing two wheeled people through the rest of the mall back to our car, is also singing loudly with me. We are singing loudly and getting noticed, but nobody is offering to help. That's okay, we can manage, we've got this. So this finger's gonna be the stroller, this finger's gonna be the wheelchair. I have lodged them together at the top, but I'm trying to keep the wheels separate so that I can hold on to the outside handles of both and push both of my people through the rest of the halls of the mall. So as we made our way with me pushing both the stroller and the wheelchair pressed together with me leaning at basically a 45 degree angle, sweating my jingle bells off and singing like a crazy person because it was a laugh or cry situation and my mom and I would always choose to laugh hysterically. Probably why nobody chose to help us. We looked like we were insane. Eventually we abandoned my little like physics science puzzle of trying to press the two vehicles together because we just kept getting caught and running into pillars and things. We instead put Scarlett in front of my mom. I would push the wheelchair. She would push the stroller while having it popped back wheelie style. Scarlett still crying. Now she's facing the ceiling as she's crying and continuing to trudge our way through the mall. Every once in a while my mom would point out something in the window going by. Oh look cute handbag. When we eventually made our way out and we could see the exit in front of us it was dark outside but we weren't done yet because we had one short elevator ride to the top of the parking garage structure that I had parked us in and then we had to get to the very back corner of it holiday shopping remember it was bustling a couple of hours ago before all of this began I could tell my mom was holding on by a thread I think we were a little bit late for her taking her evening medications everything was legitimately falling apart we were just pretending like we didn't see it and that was working for us got out of the mall into the elevator, tight squeeze, lots of wheels and people to navigate through, but we made it, that's okay. We're up the elevator, getting back out of the elevator, jamming everybody a little bit along the way as I tried to get all the tires and everything situated. And now all we have to do is get to our car. We can do this. I felt like my mom and I were like the underdogs of the Amazing Race Holiday Edition. I got my mom into her seat, I got Scarlett locked into her car seat, set the wheelchair and the stroller off to the side for a minute, got my mom set up with her medications, we're now pushing past the baby's bedtime. She's not a happy camper, but I still am. I'm still fine. Don't worry, I'm fine. It's like, I'm fine. I bolt back from whence we came with the wheelchair back into the mall, hand it off to a security guard, come back up and take my breath. We're gonna make it. It's gonna be okay. So I get back up to our car and all I have to do is put the stroller away. Remember, I've never used this stroller before. I pushed every button, I turned every lever, I pulled at every strap trying to get this thing to fold up. I am freezing cold, I'm in the rain, my baby is crying in the car and my mom is absolutely exhausted and I'm done singing. I want to go home. 
This was supposed to be the end. There wasn't supposed to be any more hurdles for me to overcome. I was just supposed to go home and have it be a successful end of day. I'm muscling this thing so much, trying to get it to fold back up to fit into my teeny tiny little car that eventually I am bending the bars without realizing it, just trying to get it to fold until I have a stroller just sitting in a half broken state and I can't take it anymore. Nobody was around, but I was a scary sight. I couldn't feel my fingers. It sounded like a Venus and Serena Williams tennis match was going on with all of the grunts. Jingle bells had been replaced with expletives flying out of my face, and I was beating this thing to the ground. Everybody has a breaking point. I was sweating from the epic mall journey that we had just completed. I'm shivering because it's so cold outside and it's doing the little spitty Seattle rain thing. It's dark and I'm alone with vulnerable people and I just want to go home. The stroller became my enemy that night, and so I made some choices. I walked to the edge of the parking garage where we were on the top floor, looked down, and saw a row of overflowing garbage cans four stories below me. So with my best tennis player's grunt, I hurled that thing over the side of the parking garage without a second thought and watched it smash to the ground and break into several pieces. And that was the day that stroller died, but the rest of us survived. So I took a big cleansing breath in the rain, calmly got back into the car, turned on the Christmas carols, and we drove the rest of the way home. All I wanted that day was memories of me and my mom and Scarlett going out together, three generations doing something with the Christmas spirit. I knew there weren't that many Christmases left with us, and I tried so, so, so hard to have it be a good day tied with good memories. I never told that story here because I thought that people would just ream me to shreds. One, for ruining a stroller that was a gift to us. Two, for throwing it over the side of a building. <laughs> I mean, surely not everybody's gonna be happy with me that I did that. But when I look back now, all these years later, I think I remember so much more of that day than just going to get Christmas pictures with my baby and my mom. And because of the integral part that dumb stroller played in my whole day, making everything so much more difficult for us, I appreciate it even more. That was the day that Bits and Clips broke and was a little better off for it, I think. And I like that it was unspoken between me and my mom and we just continued on with our Christmas carols. It was like a holiday Thelma and Louise moment, but the only thing that had to go off the cliff was the stroller. It was a good day. Anybody else have a haggard holiday story to tell? Let me know in the comments. I've got a weekly bit for you next week, so look forward to that. Make sure you hit thumbs up, subscribe, hit the notifications, and I'll see you next Monday.